alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah wa akbar Allah wa akbar Allah wa akbar Allah wa akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام حي My dear respected brothers and sisters, indeed, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we seek help from Him, we seek forgiveness from Him and we seek refuge in Him from the evils of our own souls and darkness of our own deeds. Whosoever is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can misguide him and whosoever is declared misguided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can guide him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us, O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he ought to be feared and do not die. Do not die except in a state of complete submission and he has reminded us, O oh, mankind, O oh, mankind, O oh, people, be mindful of your duties to your Lord, the one who has created you from a single soul and from that single soul he has created his soul mate. And from those two he has created many men and women and be mindful of your responsibilities and duties to your Lord through whose name to seek the rights of one another and maintain the relationship of kin. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watcher over all things. And he has reminded us, O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he ought to be feared and speak the word of truth. He will forgive your shortcomings and your sins and he will correct your deeds and actions 
whosoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, indeed he has achieved a great success. These are the reminders of our success lies in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Indeed, the best of the book, the most truthful of the book is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of the guidance is the guidance of Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu so Brothers and sisters, I bear witness that there is no God, there is no creator, there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his servant. Once a Bedouin came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this was the question he asked and this question was not something new. That particular question had been asked before him to pretty much every single messenger and prophet who came before Prophet sallallahu And in particular, this particular question was asked to Isa as well. As the Bedouin approaches Prophet sallallahu and he asked, O Muhammad, O Muhammad, when is the hour? And this is the rhetoric which is used to ask when is the last hour of this existence? When is the day of judgment going to be established? And this is something, the knowledge of which lies only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the world will come to an end, nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not have any knowledge of when actually the hour is going to be established. But Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a very beautiful response, very wise response to the bad wind. In answer to the question, Prophet asked another question. What have you prepared for it? My dear brothers and sisters, as we stand on the second last Friday of this year, as the calendar is about to flip to a new number, 2017, as we can see, the days and moments and years are flying by in front of our own eyes. Every single such occasion should remind us of our destiny. It should tell us that we are today one year closer to our death than we were a year ago. As the calendar is flipping, even though it has no religious significance in our deed, but it should serve us as a reminder that we are getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting closer to the hour on which we will be questioned how we spend our life. Did we pay attention to our salah? Did we pay attention to our ibadah? Did we pay attention to our responsibilities of conveying the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the others? Did we do the right things in our life? My brothers and sisters, this is the reminder to myself and all the brothers and sisters over here that these days, let these days not be the days of celebration. Let these days not be the days of extravagant spending. Let these days be the days of reflection that we are closer to our graves and our death and our destiny and the moment on which we will be held accountable and responsible and questioned for our actions and deeds. My brothers and sisters, what is so important in our life is the condition of our heart. The heart is mentioned about 137 times in the Quran. And these days I would like to encourage everybody to just reflect upon what is in our heart, what is the condition of our heart. And if there are any dark spots, if there are any weaknesses, if there is any greed, if there is any jealousy, if there is any grudge, this is the time to address those issues. Let's reflect upon that and let's see how we can purify our heart so that when we stand in front of our heart, our heart will be labeled as al qalbul salim the sound and submissive heart to the Lord. So what changes the condition of heart? What makes it unsound? What makes it, what makes it sick? 
and dirty, primarily the human desires, the sins, the transgressions against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a heart unsound, it will make it hardened. There is no softness or humanity will be left if we continue to be jealous, if we continue to be greedy, if we continue to be selfish, if we continue to be self-centered, that will make our heart hardened and unsound, unfit to be presented in front of our Lord, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned on that day, and the day on which property will not avail. Our wealth, our cars, our mansions, our houses, our sons, our relatives, none will avail on that day. And there is an exception. Except him who comes to Allah with a sound heart. And I make dua on these blessed moments of the blessed day of Yom al Jum'ah that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our heart and soul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clear our hearts from any kind of dirt, of greed, any kind of dirt, of grudges, any kind of anger which is unsound. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the love of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the love of his creation, the humanity. My brothers and sisters, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed to his heart and he kept mentioning as he was describing the taqwa, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this fear is not the fear of destruction. This is the fear of love that my Lord may get upset with me. I will not be able to get the attention from somebody who is so loving and so compassionate. And that is the kind of love, that is the taqwa in the heart of a believer which is so important. The Prophet ﷺ kept pointing to his heart and he kept saying, At-taqwa ha-huna, at-taqwa ha-huna. So taqwa belongs to the heart. My brothers and sisters, when we disperse from this gathering, I would like to encourage everybody to reflect upon what is there in my heart. Is my heart softened towards the humanity? Do I have enough compassion towards those who are not so fortunate? There is a lot of misery we see around us. There are a lot of people who are not so fortunate. I would like all of you to reflect upon what are we today? And the second point is, will I have the same opportunity a year from now? Do I have a guarantee that I would live a day, a month, a week, or a year from today? If that is not the case, if there is no guarantee, then this is the time to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time for rujur ila Allah to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulul qawli haza wa astaghfiru illahli wa la kumul sa'il wa muslimin wa muslimat fa astaghfiru inna wa al-mafiru rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Rasulil Ameen Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabi Ajma'een. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My brothers and sisters, we get engaged in lots of worldly activities. Let's do the self-evaluation. Let's do the ihtisab. Let's take account of ourselves before we are accounted for before we are held accountable for our own actions because that is something the best we can do to ourselves. Let's evaluate how much time we spend watching the games, how much time we spend responding to our WhatsApp channels, how much time we are spending in activities which will not avail anything on the Day of Judgment. Can we take out some moments to do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can we take few minutes each day to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
even if we don't read it with the meaning, even if we don't understand it, but let's keep that connection going. Few minutes, four minutes, three minutes, one minute. Can we spend one minute? Can we make that commitment that one minute I will take out in a day to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, with khuloo, with purity of heart. I will not have my attention diverted anywhere else. I will connect with my Lord. Because that will give us the ability to stand with the mercy of God, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment with a sound and pure heart. And let's make a beautiful dua which is mentioned in Quran. Rabbana la tuzakulubana ba'da is hadaytana wa hablana min ladukka rahma inna kahanta waha. Our Lord, let not our hearts deviate after you have guided us and grant us from yourself mercy. Indeed, you are the bestower of the mercy. So this is a beautiful dua. If we have the time available, if the kids are off from college and school, and if you have taken the time off, if you have not memorized this dua, let's spend some time. It will not take more than an hour to memorize this dua. Rabbana la tuzakulubana ba'adha iz hadaytana wa habnana min ladunka rahma inna ka'anta al-wahab. So let's put in an effort. It will get, get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in one minute, I would also like to mention that our life is very transitional. The life that has begun, it will come to an end. What we'll be leaving behind are perhaps our good deeds, our sadaqai jariyah, and few things we can do. We can see a lot of pain and sorrow around us. I would like to encourage everybody to see through the words, through the typing, through the computer, through the electronic media, what can we do to alleviate that pain and sorrow? The other thing we can do is to invest in our institutions, in our masajid, because all of these walls you see, they are likely to last beyond our lifespan. Any investment we made in these walls, in future, 20 years, 30 years from today, somebody would be walking in perhaps from other faith, and we have seen that many Christian brothers and sisters, Jewish brothers and sisters, they came to this place and they took the shahada and they mentioned, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad al-Qadduhu rasulu. And that reward will be distributed over to all those who have invested in these walls. My brothers and sisters, before you leave today, I would like to encourage all of you to donate to our masajid, invest in our institutions, so that 100 years from today, when we are buried under the ground, somebody walks in here and takes the shahada, abandons the life of shirk, and becomes a mahal, and in turn becomes eligible for a great success in hereafter, he or she would be pointing on the day of judgment, such and such individual made an investment in your house of worship, O our Lord, please forgive their sins. My brothers and sisters, this is the way we can compensate for our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reward. If I may request all the brothers to come forward so that we can, the brothers who are standing in the back can be accommodated, inshallah, we have house full. And just one quick reminder, and as I was talking to Sheikh Radwan, that some of the etiquettes of the khutbah is when the Imam is speaking, he needs an undivided attention, therefore the talking or saying the salam as you enter is discouraged, is not permissible. Same thing does apply to the texting. And obviously, when we stand here, the best of the ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the best ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, the person, the mercy of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without his sacrifice, without his efforts, and without his arrival, we would not have achieved the purity of guidance. The Prophet who came before him, unfortunately their message is lost. The Prophet sallallahu his personality, his mercy, and his kindness has 
provided this beautiful message to us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has acknowledged that in his holy book when he mentioned inna allaha malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim inna ka hamidu mujib allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim fil alameen inna ka hamidu mujib اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم الأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم عيز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عيز الإسلام والمسلمين وأظل الشرك والمشركين اللهم دمر أعداك وأعدان أعداء الدين اللهم انصر المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وصلة النبي وعبادة المحدين اللهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم أرنا الحق حق وزن الدباء اللهم أرنا الباطل باطل وزن الجنباء برحمتك يا أرحم الرحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم والله يستجيب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أهم وأكبر أقيم الصلاة